Sukkot is one of those things that I weirdly forget every single year. Like I have no idea what it's supposed to be for. Welcome back to And God Was Like, Alma's weekly Torah portion series hosted by me, Arielle Kaplan. What the fuck is Sukkot? Sukkot falls on the 15th of Tishrei. No work is allowed on the first day. The last day of Sukkot is called Hoshana Raba. It's a huge deal. I'm going to break it down later. Why the fuck do we celebrate Sukkot? Sukkot is actually one of three major pilgrimage slash harvest festivals. So back in ancient day, as a thank you to God, we would bring our fruit to the temple and it was basically like God's big birthday party. It was BYOS, bring your own sacrifice. We're thanking God for all of the produce that we harvested in the past season. So imagine this, you're a farmer, you just got all of your produce, you reaped way more than you thought. You're like, fuck yes, I am the king of the world. I am untouchable. All of my effort produced produce. Fuck with me, why don't you? And God is like, mm hmm And he kind of knocks off your little crown and keeps you humble. So the idea of Sukkot is that one might think they're so fucking amazing because they had a really good harvest season, but God reminds you none of this would be possible without him. You didn't do shit on your own. You're fucking nothing. And God, he is the true king. So Sukkot is called the Feast of the Tabernacles, Feast of the Booths, and it's said to be Zman Simkantenu, a time of joy. Basically during Sukkot, we live in these sukkahs, these booths, booths to remind us of when we dwelled in the wilderness for 40 years. We're going from like one high of celebrating our harvest to a low of remembering when we were in Egypt. Now what the fuck is a sukkah? A sukkah is this adult fort that we live in for a week outside. It's a mitzvah to just be in the sukkah, but you're supposed to sleep there, do your homework there, read Torah, play little seven minutes in sukkah. It must have at least three walls and it is covered with secha, I think it's called, which is like anything made out of organic material and you spread it on the roof just thin enough so that you can still see the stars above. My favorite part of researching for In God was like is finding the really wacky Midrashim and this one just happens to fit the bill. Passover parallels the first temple, Shavuot parallels the second temple, and Sukkot parallels the third temple to come that the Mashiach will build. So we say a special prayer the last time that we leave the sukkah and it talks about this mythical dragon the Leviathan that the Mashiach will slay and build a sukkah from its skin. And then the Mashiach eats the dragon as his first meal because like obviously he's gonna be so hungry he just like brought all the diaspora back to Israel. And only the righteous are invited to partake in the meal so don't want to miss out on that invite. Inside the sukkah it's customary to decorate it with fruits and stuff and also with attractive images like a portrait of Shia LaBeouf or Zac Efron or like Mila Kunis. What the fuck is a lulav and an etrog. So this is the lulav. The whole thing is called the lulav, but in reality, this part is a lulav. I can't make this less phallic than it is. I'm trying and it, I can't. Anyway, this represents the spine. Then we have myrtle, which is either this one or this one. I really don't know. It represents the eyes. The willow represents the lips. The etrog is like the heart of the human body. It's also a boob. I'm not joking. This really is a feminine symbol in Jewish spirituality. When you're pregnant, you put this under your bed for an easy labor. So altogether, the letters of the whole unit come to represent God's name. Stand east to face Jerusalem. I'm not going to shake it properly, but it kind of looks something like this. I really don't. I don't know. It's it, it's something like this. The end of Sukkot is called Hoshana Rabbah, and it is our last opportunity to beg God for mercy. Hoshana means save us, please, because on Hoshana Rabbah, God judges us on how much rain we are worthy of receiving. So on this day, you walk around the whole temple, shaking the lulav and etrog everywhere, calling God. It's kind of like a mystical, witchy kind of ceremony. Don't tell the rabbis I said that. And then we read the Kohelet. This Megillah is a 
attributed to King Solomon. It's basically about a king who had everything he ever wanted, realizes that life is meaningless unless you live it for God. He says, all is vanity and a futile grasping and chasing after the wind. This is like that guy in your MFA class who thinks writing sad boy poetry will get him laid. But King Solomon did get laid a lot. Last on the slutty girl's sukkah docket is welcoming of the Ushpizin, the seven leaders of Israel who we invite into our sukkah. Feminist households will invite another seven female leaders of Israel. Sephardic Jews will have a really dope ass chair set up just for their special guests. Some people like to invite their ancestors to the table. So this year I'm betting Ruth Bader Ginsburg will be sukkah huffing a lot. May her memory be a revolution. Chag Sameach everyone. I'll see you next week.